Greetings, my fellow explorers of the human psyche. This is your good friend Frank welcoming you all to another enlightening episode of The Clockwork Eye. The only channel which seeks to bring illumination to your mind, one insight at a time. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey into the depths of our own minds as we unravel the concept of the locus of control. This powerful psychological construct, first introduced by Julian Rotter in the 1950s, has profound implications for how we perceive our own agency, navigate challenges, and shape the course of our lives. So join me, as we investigate the intricacies of this groundbreaking theory and discover how understanding our own locus of control can unlock our true potential and help us thrive in an ever-changing world. At its core, the locus of control refers to the degree to which individuals believe they have control over the events and outcomes in their lives. Those with an internal locus of control tend to attribute their successes and failures to their own actions, skills, and efforts. They believe that they are the masters of their own fate, and that through hard work, perseverance, and self-reflection, they can overcome obstacles and achieve their goals. On the other hand, those with an external locus of control tend to attribute the events in their lives to external factors, such as luck, chance, or the actions of others. They may feel like they are at the mercy of forces beyond their control, and that no matter how hard they try, their efforts are ultimately futile in the face of a capricious and unpredictable world. The concept of the locus of control has its roots in the work of Julian Rotter, an American psychologist who sought to understand the factors that influence human behavior and motivation. In his seminal work, Social Learning and Clinical Psychology, Rotter argued that our beliefs about the causes of our own behavior play a crucial role in shaping our personality, emotions, and overall approach to life. Rotter's ideas were heavily influenced by the work of earlier psychologists, such as Kurt Lewin and Alfred Adler, who emphasized the importance of subjective perceptions and interpretations in shaping human experience. As Adler famously remarked, we are not determined by our experiences, but are self-determined by the meaning we give to them. This idea of self-determination lies at the heart of the locus of control theory. By recognizing that our beliefs about our own agency and control can have a powerful impact on our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, we can begin to cultivate a more empowered and resilient mindset in the face of life's challenges. Research has consistently shown that individuals with a strong internal locus of control tend to be more successful, both personally and professionally. They are more likely to take initiative, persist in the face of setbacks, and adapt to changing circumstances with flexibility and creativity. As the renowned psychologist Albert Bandura noted, people with an internal locus of control believe that they can influence their own lives and that their efforts are not in vain. In contrast, those with an external locus of control may struggle to find motivation and purpose, feeling like they are at the mercy of forces beyond their control. They may be more prone to anxiety, depression, and learned helplessness, a phenomenon first described by Martin Seligman in which individuals become passive and resigned in the face of repeated failures or setbacks. But the good news is that our locus of control is not fixed or immutable. Through self-reflection, mindfulness, and a willingness to challenge our own assumptions and beliefs, we can begin to shift our perspective and cultivate a greater sense of personal agency and control. One powerful tool for developing a more internal locus of control is the practice of cognitive reframing. By learning to identify and challenge the negative or self-limiting thoughts that may be holding us back, we can begin to see ourselves and our circumstances in a new light. As the Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Another key strategy is to focus on the things that are within our control, rather than dwelling on the things that are not. By directing our energy and attention towards the actions we can take, the choices we can make, and the attitudes we can cultivate, we can begin to feel more empowered and effective in our lives. As the serenity prayer, often attributed to Reinhold Niebuhr, reminds us, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Ultimately, 
the concept of the locus of control invites us to take a deeper look at our own beliefs and assumptions about the world and our place within it. It challenges us to question the stories we tell ourselves about our own limitations and to embrace a more expansive and empowered vision of what is possible. As the pioneering psychologist Carl Rogers once said, the good life is a process, not a state of being. It is a direction, not a destination. By cultivating a strong internal locus of control, we can begin to navigate that process with greater clarity, confidence, and purpose, knowing that we have the power to shape our own lives and to make a positive impact on the world around us. So, my dear Clockwork Eye viewers, I invite you to reflect on your own locus of control. Where do you tend to place the blame or credit for the events and outcomes in your life? How might shifting your perspective towards a more internal locus of control empower you to take greater control of your own destiny? Share your thoughts, experiences, and insights in the comments below, and let us learn and grow together as we explore this fascinating aspect of the human psyche. As always, if you have found value in this video, leave a like, and consider subscribing to The Clockwork Eye for more thought-provoking content that will challenge you to think deeply about yourself and the world around you. Remember, as the great philosopher Lao Tzu once said, mastering others is strength, mastering yourself is true power. May you find that true power within yourself, and may it guide you towards a life of purpose, fulfillment, and endless possibility. Until next time, my fellow travelers on the path of self-discovery, keep questioning, keep growing, and keep embracing the incredible potential that lies within you. This is your friend Frank at the Clockwork Eye, signing off.